Okay, that's 1 p.m. British summertime. Welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me loud and clear and you can see the welcome screen, if you could just type a Y in the chat box so that I know we are good to start. Testing audio, one, two, three. Testing audio, one, two, three. If you can just type a Y in the chat box. Thanks very much. Okay, let's, uh, let's get the show on the road. Before we jump into charts today, as always, I want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, most importantly for today, the uh, views and opinions expressed by me in this, uh, in this session are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. For those of you that are here for the first time today, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. I essentially had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started uh, day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down, uh, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it's feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months uh, was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused purely on financial gains to becoming process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategies, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you accept and understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for uh, about three to five markets per day. Um, these are shared through the Ticknell TradingView accounts. I also run Tickmill's e-mini strategy group where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trade plan for the New York cash trading session of the S&P 500, giving my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have offered over 2,200 points of profit since we launched last April. Second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Tickmill Futures Trading Telegram Group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York Cash session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify 
asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump in to the charts. So as always, we're gonna start with the equity indexes and uh, the S&P 500. I'm using the E-mini futures contract here, um, but the levels can be uh, altered and represent the S&P 500 essentially. So what have we got? Well, I've been tracking a potential five-wave sequence to complete into this 3690, 3700 area. You can see here on the daily time frame, we've got this descending trend line support coming in. We've also got the uh, 131 extension of our 4631 swing high. So what I'm looking for today now is for us to complete this five wave sequence and potentially trade higher um, to really encourage long positions or uh, to engage on the long side. We really want to take out the high C uh, post the uh, FOMC press conference last night. Um, that would suggest that we have a tradable low in place. So back through this uh, 3850 level, and if we can do that, the target for me becomes this high volume mode here on the four hour chart, 41.18. We have the descending trend line resistance coming in there, 41.30s. Um, now, if we don't get a revert, if we don't see bids come into the market today, uh, then I'm anticipating we will trade down. The next area of interest is going to be the 36.20 area. Now, the 36.20 area represents a symmetry swing. So this was the pandemic decline. And that 3620 uh, matches the scale of that decline uh, from the highs here. So that's gonna be the next area of interest for me on the downside if we don't hold 3700. So if we open up in the cash trading session today, we have weakness, we take out the 37, uh, 37 to 3690 area, then I'm gonna be looking for shorts to trade down into that target zone um, on the next level to the 3620s. Next, we have the NASDAQ. You'll see similar pattern developing here. Uh, we haven't quite made a, uh, a new low here. We're holding potential double bottom. So again, the, 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 the pattern I'm watching for here, let me just draw it in for you, is we're basically looking for this five wave sequence to complete. So we have a wave four high in place here. So what we're looking for is a marginal new low to develop here in the NASDAQ to complete the sequence. And then I'm looking for the same trade here in the NASDAQ back up into the high volume mode, 12,600 uh, 12, there. And in terms of the target for where we ideally like to see this um, wave five low complete, we have a target zone below us, 11,094 uh, 11, down to 10,900. We also have monthly projected range support there coming in and we have the trend line support there as well. So any move down into this zone, we watch for bullish reversal patterns, as long as we maintain momentum divergence. When I'm talking about momentum divergence, what I want to see here ideally is price make a new low, but we don't see a new low in terms of the momentum indicator here. And that, will, uh, that should encourage then uh, bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking initially for a test up into 12,600. Moving to the Dow Jones, you can see a lot of these charts are, are in a similar setup here. We have made a marginal new low. Uh, what I'd ideally like to see now, let's just bring this here. So I'd ideally like to see a, uh, a test here, just taking out the 30,000 level into 29,900, 29,800. And then I look for, again, Bullish reversal patterns, as long as we ma maintain momentum divergence, that's key for these uh, reversal plays or counter trend trades. We want to take, we want to make that uh, new low, and then again, we're going to be targeting that high volume nose on the um, on the chart there. Moving to the Russell, the Russell week uh, has it still has an equality objective versus the swing high here at twenty one forties. Uh, down into the weekly high volume node, 1562 and 1579 is the equality objective. So I'm looking for the Russell to break down and test that area. And again, from there, we're watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. 
and I'd be thinking about a move up into trend channel resistance here towards 1900. Any loss of, if we don't find support at that 1560 uh, area, 1570, next downside objective becomes the yearly S3 down to 14.10 on the downside. DAX, <clears throat> pivotal test here for the DAX. If we take out um, this trend line support here on a closing basis, on a weekly closing basis, 12,987, Next objective becomes the high volume load, 12,360. Uh, 12, and then we have an equality objective to the downside, which coincides with 61.8% retracement of the post pandemic advance. Would see us down testing 11,200 11, would be the next downside objective. So it's really going to be key this week and next because we take out this trend line that suggests significant weakness. And we would be looking then for uh, a more significant breakdown in terms of the DAX. So we are sitting right at the equality objective here at 13,000. So let's see if buyers are going to step back in. And, uh, and again, target becomes the high volume mode on the four hour chart here, which would see us back up into uh, just below the 14,000 level. But it's really going to be key to see if we can hold that trend line support. Nikkei, similar type of setup here for Nikkei, testing some pivotal levels here, uh, trying to uh, trying to bottom here on the four hour chart. We have got some nice momentum divergence. I do want to see this psych indicator go green again. But if we can get a daily reversal from here, then we're targeting range resistance back up to 28,365 for the Nikkei. Equally, like, a, like we just talked about with the DAX, we take out this trend line support from the pandemic lows on a, closing uh, on a weekly closing basis. The next downside objective initially becomes the uh, yearly S3, 23,035. Then the equality objective versus the swing high here at 28,545, which would see us testing 22,525 on the downside. Dollar index. Looking for a wave five test here to just above 106 would be an ideal objective. We have the yearly R3 there, 10630s. I am actually running a short dollar position at the moment. Um, I would look to add to that on any testing to that 10630s, as I'm anticipating that that will uh, at least see us move back to retest the prior highs at 104. At this stage, any close through that 10630s would be a, a very bullish development. And the next upside objective technically will be the 10730s on the upside. Euro, obviously the ECB, uh, the ad hoc meeting yesterday hasn't done much really to support the Euro. And, uh, and as we stand at the moment, as resistance is maintained above 105, um, the target now, the, the next downside objective is 102.20s. And then we're thinking about a parity test for the euro. At this stage, can't really get constructive on the euro until we trade back through the trend line resistance here in the pivot, 106.20s on the upside. Dolly Yen, this is another uh, short that I've got running at the moment. Um, a nice bearish reversal from weekly range resistance. There's the potential we could make a new high here into the R3 at one of uh, just above 136, but we've got some nice momentum divergence in play, and I could see us testing back into these prior highs, 131.20s. If we don't find support there, then we look for a retest of the potential wave for low back to the 126.50s. At this stage also, what I would highlight on the four-hour chart, let me just get rid of the drawings there. It's uh, we are finding support at a equality objective versus this swing structure here. So you can see three waves. So there is certainly the potential we make a new high here. We'd really want to see this uh, support go at the 131 area to uh, to get really interested on the downside. Like I say, I'm running a, a short in that at the moment, but this uh, this doesn't look too encouraging. Uh, as we're holding the equality objective and the weekly range support. So it could be that we are yet to make another new high into that R3, as highlighted here on the daily time frame. And then again, I'll be watching for that bearish momentum uh, divergence to, uh, to be maintained. And again, I would look to, uh, to re-engage on the short side. Euro-Yen. <clears throat> so similarly, uh, what I'm looking for in the Euro-Yen is a test of trend line support now, 137.30s. 
And I think if we look at this structure here, so yeah, just below we have the high volume node on the four hour chart and we have the equality objective versus the swing high here. So that will complete a technical three wave corrective move. Then we watch for bullish reversal patterns into this area. And if we get that, then I'd be looking to re-engage on the long side in terms of the Euro Yen. Aussie Yen, potential double top here. It's, uh, and the rejection from the yearly R3 so for now, from a technical perspective, let me just remove these and give you some targets to think about. So whilst we hold this swing structure here, so against the 94.58 high, I'm looking for a test of 90.20. We've got monthly projected range support there. So if we are going to take another look at the upside, this is the target zone where I'll be watching for bullish reversals to engage on the long side, looking for a minimum retest of the price cycle highs on route then to new highs. We've got trend channel resistance, monthly projected range resistance coming in just above the 99 handle there in terms of the Aussie yen. A bunch of these yens are in a similar setup here, the CAD yen. We can be thinking now about move back into the 108.85 area, uh, which uh, is just below monthly projected range support. See, we've got trend line support coming in there as well. Let's use this here. Yes, yeah, so we've got trend line support there. So this CAD yen could give us an opportunity in the coming sessions here. If we can hold into this 101 uh, to 100, uh, 101, yeah, just below 101, 100.85, we've got the trend line support, monthly projected range support just above there. So again, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns as an opportunity to engage on the long side. If we take out this trend line support though, we could have a much more meaningful high in place. And what I'd be thinking about there would be this type of scenario. So we break down, check back into the trend line support, then to act as resistance. Then we've got a potential head and shoulders scenario in play and a much deeper correction to develop. But uh, watching that trend line test as the, uh, as the first area of interest. <clears throat> so the dollar CAD uh, held that 125 area and we have since seen a move to the upside, it looks pretty impulsive at this stage. So what I look for now in the dollar CAD here on four hour time frame would be something like this, a test into that high volume node, 128.40s, We've got monthly, a daily projected range support just below. So watch the bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, looking for a retest of those prior highs up to 130.70. The ultimate upside objective we've got for that dollar cab, remember, is the equality objective 132.14. Sterling, this one has tested and held, and we're getting a nice, uh, nice price structure developing here. We've got these inside candles and inside. Uh, pin bar to the upside. If we get a close like this or back through those 122s, I want to be uh, trading sterling on the long side, looking initially for a retest of the trend channel resistance coming in 124.25. So keep an eye on this one. We talked about it last week. We were looking for this test of the uh, 120 handle. We saw good bids emerge there, held the uh, yearly S3. These are pivotal levels to uh, see where if we're going to see buyers step in meaningfully. And, uh, and we could have a, a decent low in place here for sterling, obviously BOE uh, raised rates, 25 basis points today. Uh, and so we did see a bit of weakness post that, uh, post that decision, but we can see that buyers are trying to step in here and defend this 120. So watch the close there on sterling tonight, could be an opportunity to engage on the long side. Aussie, we are looking for 6640s on the downside. And we're seeing uh, a bit of weakness develop here. So any break back through 6830s, I want to be sure looking for that 6640 area before we try and put in a more meaningful bottom there in terms of the Aussie. Uh, let's have a look at gold. Yeah, disappointing gold. We had a nice outside reversal candle last week on the close. Uh, couldn't take out the highs and we're since reversing. Uh, this suggests we could uh, we could be looking to take out this trend line support, and if so, uh, we want to start thinking about uh, downside targets here for gold. Let's just 
structural in what we'd be thinking of. So yeah, we had a downside of quality objective back into range support at 1670 on the downside. Close for gold this week is going to, uh, it's going to be interesting. Any break through 1780s, and I want to be short looking for 1670s. Let's move to crude oil. Crude uh, breaking down through the, the trend channel support. So we're starting to see a bit of weakness develop here in crude. Um, obviously, it's US driving season is starting, but we're hearing uh, rhetoric out of uh, Bi President Biden yesterday, uh, con very concerned about uh, the profits that these, uh, these oil producers are making. So what we think about now is if we get a move into 111.30s, watch how we react on a retest of that trend channel uh, support potentially now to act as resistance and we could have more meaningful high here looking for move back down into the high volume load towards the hundred dollar level in terms of crude uh, we held that 78.6 percent retracement here on the daily and uh, and so things could be weakening up a bit here for crude 108 would uh, will be an interesting level to keep an eye on as well bitcoin the bloodbath uh, continues we were watching this trend line support gave way. So the, the, the setup or the, the level of most interest to me now in terms of Bitcoin is whilst we trade below this uh, trend line resistance, it's in here. So as that holds, we are looking for a move down to test 12,460, which is the equality objective versus the swing structure here. I've, I've labeled it up uh, for the purposes of those who follow Elliott Waves. You can clearly see the structure. So that, that test of 12,460 will be very interesting if we get it. And we'll see, uh, we'll see how we do there. Can't get constructive on Bitcoin until we take out 27,500, the trend channel resistance uh, to the upside. Ether, this was the one we had last week where I was talking about short through the 1700 level. It, uh, it worked very well. Uh, gap down $250 of, uh, of profits there, 250 points to the downside. And, uh, and I still see further weakness. I'm looking for a test of 851, which is the equality objective versus the swing structure here on the daily. And again, paying close attention to how we trade there. Certainly if that coincides with Bitcoin testing that 12,000 area, we could have, uh, could have a tradable local low in place at, at a minimum there. I'm going to finish up this week with a couple of stocks that I'm watching, single name stocks, CFDs. NVIDIA, I'm looking for a, a test of 150. I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns there. I want to see some momentum divergence maintained here on the daily time frame as an opportunity to, uh, to engage on the long side. Initially looking to move back up towards $200 on the upside with NVIDIA. These have all been posted on the TradingView um, account. I'll post the link in a minute for those who want to follow these up on a, on a daily basis. Microsoft, uh, sorry, Goldman Sachs. Pivotal 280 test, 50% retracement of the post pandemic advance. Uh, so, watching now for further um, upside momentum to develop here. If we can get back through the $300 level, I've got an initial target up at $321 uh, and potentially uh, further upside there if we can break out of the trend channel. However, if we take out the lows through uh, 275, the next downside target becomes 250 for Goldman. Microsoft. Uh, yeah, 240 was the uh, equality objective versus this swing structure here. We tested and held. Um, what I'm looking for now to uh, gain some positive uh, momentum divergence. What we want to see is a move through this four hour trend line resistance. If we can get back through uh, 265 on the upside, we've got high volume node at $300 on the upside to target. However, if we don't see any follow through today, and it's obviously futures are, are weak at the moment um, in terms of the US. So if we take out uh, 232, the monthly projected range support, then we look for a move to the high volume node and the 131 extension at 215 as the next downside objective uh, for Goldman, uh, sorry, for Microsoft there. Gonna finish up with a couple of BTA. ETS, TLT, which is the 20-year Treasury bond futures. We have tested the equality objective versus this bigger swing structure here. 
at the 110 level. We've also got the yearly S3, monthly projected range support. So I'm looking for any move back through 113, initially targeting the high volume node on the weekly chart at 121. And if we can get through there, then we can think about a retest of the descending triangle uh, prior support to act as resistance 135. However, if we can't uh, break out of the trend channel and sellers step back in in this 121 area, I want to be short, initially looking for a move to 9530s. And then the technical target for the triangle break is 8990s on the downside. Finishing up here with XLE, the energy ETF. Looking now for a test of the trend channel support here. Um, we don't have the, the projector is a bit lower at the high volume mode, 76.90. So let's see if, uh, if we get this type of, one second guys, if we get this type of structure here now. So we just take out trend channel support on a fake breakout. By a step back in at the high volume mode, I'm looking for us to trade higher and, uh, and take out the price cycle highs in terms of XLE. Um, we can be thinking then about monthly projected range resistance towards that 100 level next at least. Pay attention to how we trade at the trend line, 79, 90s, and the high volume mode, the quality objective, 76, 90s as a potential reversal zone. So that's, uh, those are the charts that I'm tracking at the moment and the, uh, the trades that I see developing in coming sessions. I'm going to post a couple of links into the chat for those that are interested. Um, firstly, we have the uh, Tickmill Future Strategy Group, so where I give the S&P 500 daily trade plan uh, for those that are interested in, uh, in getting that. You just have to request access and I'll, uh, I'll add you to that group. And then um, we'll, I'll also post the uh, trading view accounts. One second, guys. So this link will allow you to follow my daily trade setups and updates uh, through that, uh, that Ticknell trading view account. So are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, type an N in the chat box. Uh, I know I've done a reasonable job of explaining things and we can ah, see questions coming through here. One second. Q and A. Yeah, uh, I've just run through the, the four X pairs that I'm, I'm tracking there. Um, hopefully that's, uh, that helped you. GBP, CHF, okay, let's change things up here and go here. So Sterling Swiss, obviously Swiss National Bank uh, surprised markets today, coming in with a bit more of a, uh, uh, well, certainly a, a lot more. They, uh, they raised 50 bits today. So we're seeing right at monthly projected range support. So this so far this month, we've tested um, monthly projected range resistance and back down to monthly projected range support. At this stage, what I would be thinking about would be um, any, any daily close through this monthly projected range support would be a bearish development, and I'd be short looking for a move down into the 116s as the next downside objective um, would be the, the play there. You can see buyers are attempting to defend the monthly projected range support here, but like I say, any close through there on a daily basis, you can, uh, you can simply look to uh, trade out intraday pullbacks on the hourly or the four hour time frame. And, uh, and I would target a move down into that 116 area. Um, the other pair, GBP, AUD. I'll post the link, Reginald, in a second where you can catch the recording. Uh, we'll be updated. It'll be on there later today, first thing tomorrow. Sterling Aussie, let's take a look. So we're seeing a, uh, a decent daily reversal here from support. Let's just uh, see what we've got. So what I would be thinking is if we can uh, draw this in here. So we've got this little trend line that's containing the price. So if we can get a close back through the pivot, back through this trend line resistance, then I would see the opportunity to, uh, to be long through 
175.60s, 175.70s, and I'd be targeting a move then up into the monthly projected range resistance, 179.50s on the upside uh, would be what I'd be looking at there, Chris. Um, this stage, any loss of 170, 140s, opens monthly projected range support, 169.40s, and through there, um, there's some pretty chunky downside targets versus the swing structure here, and the swing high at 192 gives a 158.13 on the downside as, uh, as a major weekly downside target. We've also got the yearly S3 there. But at the moment, we look like we're trying to put in an outside reversal here, got some um, momentum also trying to tip positive. So keep an eye on the close on that one, uh, Chris, today. That, uh, that could, uh, could give an opportunity on the upside. Thanks very much, Chris. And uh, Reginald, let me post the link for you. Um, one second. <clears throat> so you can uh, check back on the YouTube channel here, um, Reginald, and we should have uh, that. That should be up uh, by to uh, later today or first thing tomorrow. Okay, guys. If there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap the session up here. Hope to see some of you in the. Facebook strategy group and uh, be sure to follow along with the trade ideas on, uh, on trading view. Okay, as always traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.